Hey, I'm Chris. And I'm Julia. And can I put you on the spot? Sure. Okay, do you have any friends that are really close to you and know everything about you? Yeah, I do actually. I think community is really important and I get a lot out of it. I have a group of people that I keep super close and I tell them everything about me. And did you know God wants to be that close to us? Let's watch this God story and learn more. What's the difference between TV news and news in the newspaper? Have you ever tried to swat a fly with a TV? Hi, I'm Michaela, and it's nice to see you again. So one time, I wanted to spend some time with my younger cousin, and so we decided to make these paper origami action figures that he really liked. But when we got to the instructions, they made no sense. We tried so hard to make them, but they were just not working. So we had to throw them out. And that kind of reminds me of today's story, which is a story of instructions and building things. But before I get there, today's big idea is that God wants to be close to us. And through instructions and directions, we are able to be close with God. In this series, we've been following the story of Moses. And today, our story is less of a story and more of a building project. So first, God gave Moses a list of things that people could offer to God. A lot of these things were luxury items, so they were super valuable. Then, God told Moses instructions on how to build this special and sacred tent for God to live in among the people. After that, God gave directions on how to make the special container to hold the stone tablets that held the covenant that God had made with his people. And this special container is called the Ark of the Covenant. Then, God gave instructions for a special table for holy bread. He also gave instructions on a lampstand that would go within the tent to light it up. So as you can see, there were a lot of instructions for the tent, which is also known as the tabernacle. Then, there are instructions for an altar, which is a place to burn offerings to go inside the tent. Then, there are instructions for a courtyard to go outside of the tent, and instructions for oil to go in the lamps. Okay, so once all of the building instructions have been given, God tells Moses to select Aaron's family to be the priests. And the priests had a special job of working inside of the tent. Now God wanted to set the priests aside, so he gave them a special outfit to wear, almost like a uniform. So after all of the clothing has been sorted out with the priests, God gave special instructions on how the tent was supposed to work. Now the reason he did this was because he wanted to be close to his people. And let's read what he says about this. Then I will live among the people of Israel, and I will be their God. They will know that I am the Lord their God. They will know that I brought them out of Egypt so that I could live among them. I am the Lord their God. We can't really understand why God did all of this, but he had this purpose. He wanted to be close to his people. See, sin had come and created this divide, this barrier between God and the people. And so these instructions and these directions were a way to help the people get close to God again. And it's not until Jesus comes that that barrier is destroyed. So in Exodus 30, we get a few more instructions about how to set things apart for God. We also get this instruction for this beautiful, sweet-smelling thing called incense, which is kind of like a perfume. And that incense would go inside of the tent. So not only would the tent be super beautiful, but it would also smell really good. Then, God selected two very skilled people named Bezalel and Aholiab to oversee all of the building projects. So once God had given Moses all of these instructions, he reminded Moses to keep the Sabbath day as a day of rest. See, just like things would have been made for the holy tent, he wanted to create the Sabbath as a day to be set aside and holy. So even though there were a lot of instructions, God created those so that his people could be close to him. In the Old Testament, instructions were made to be close to God. But in the New Testament, God enters the earth as Jesus so that he could be close with his people. And now God lives with us through the Holy Spirit. See, God loves us so much that he wants to hang out with us. God wants to be close to us. And that's pretty cool. That's it for me today. I'm Michaela, and I'll see you next time. Uh, quickly turn to the person next to you. And discuss the following questions. Question time! Today's God story sounded a little bit less like a story and more like a building project. But the project was to make a sacred tent for God to come down and visit his people. Why did God want to do that?
What is one new or interesting thing that stood out to you today from the God story? Keepers before all the groundhogs drop? Get ready! Three, two, one, go! <laughs> With me, my faithful God, answer me when I call out to you. Give me rest from my trouble. Psalm 4, verse 1. We're so much better off than the people in Moses' time. We get to hang out with God every day and we don't need to go to a particular building to do it. Absolutely. And you may be wondering, what does it mean to hang out with God? But all that is, is including Him in whatever you're doing. Let's check out this group of girls and see what they do when they get together. And it'll give us some ideas for how we can hang out with God. I'm part of an amazing small group of girls at my church. And every Wednesday night we get together and we pray, we encourage each other, and we have a lot of fun. I love going to our small group because uh, we not only connect there, but we also connect outside of small group. Uh, we have multiple group chats that we have fun communicating through. And we also go over to each other's houses a lot just to have some fun hanging out. I really love the bond that we share together. We really do show our own personalities with each other. So on the very first spring retreat in grade six, it was my birthday on the Saturday. And so they made me stay up after dinner cleaning up. And while I was doing that, they got ready in our cabin and made a surprise party for me. And uh, during the surprise party, they gave me this bracelet and I've had it for 371 days. We stay connected during the week by checking in and texting on our group chat, and we just make sure that all our situations are doing okay and that we're doing good. I trust my small group with my life. I open up to them more than anyone else I know, and they do the same for me and everyone else, and we're just not scared to hide anything from them. There was a musical going on at my school, and I really wanted to audition. So during that time, my small group was so supporting, and when I got one of the lead roles, they were so happy, and they congratulated me, and they even got me a card. We are a very vivid small group, and we don't care if we're embarrassing to other people. And we just love to laugh, and we love to like sing and dance in front of people. And even though they may think we're weird, we don't care what they think of us. So a lot of the times we'll play games together, like bocce ball, or we'll go on picnics or hikes, and it's just really fun to spend time with them. So I was a new student at the middle school I was going to, and I found it really hard to fit in. But once I finally decided to go to midweek on Wednesdays and met my small group and the girls in it, I immediately fell at home. I think that the loving and support from my small group comes from God because they all have amazing hearts for Jesus, and they are so loving and supporting because He loved us first. I experience God a lot through other people. I feel like He communicates th through other people to me, and I see that so strongly within my small group. They tell me things that really encourage me, and it really helps me in my everyday life. 
Um, I personally experience God through my small group because when I go there every night, as soon as I'm there, they just welcome me with open arms, similar to how God would. I think my small group is a safe place to go to where we can celebrate good times, but also we can encourage each other and pray for each other during the bad times. And I think it's just a great place to just hang out together. Uh, I definitely see us being like continuing to be friends just because none of us have any bad relationships. We all get along so well and we're all so comfortable around each other. We can goof around with each other without it being weird. And so it's just really fun. That was so much fun. I wouldn't mind joining their dance party. I wouldn't mind joining the picnics. That food looked incredible. And what I loved most about that is how you can tell that the girls really care about each other. Yeah, for real. They would share all the good stuff and the bad stuff with each other. And we should do the same thing with God. He just wants to be close to us. Let's get into our small groups and talk about how we see that in our lives.